This painting is called Travel Light. If you like it, consider checking out my other videos after you like or leave a comment. Something scathing, please, if you have it in you. I'd really appreciate it. Although I did two paintings yesterday, I really wanted to paint again today. This concept I had in my mind, but I hadn't attempted to render it yet in sketch form because I doubted I could execute it properly. As you can see, I managed anyway. It's sort of becoming a series at this point, the headless figures with like the eyes in their back or in other places where they don't belong. Without a head or a face, I think the anatomy is clear enough. A neurotypical person can see it's a figure. Losing it, I suppose you could say. Like a roach, it still lives on. The concept is simple, but it is extravagant. And I find that endearing. I watched the second Enola Holmes movie. I should have known since the first didn't follow the book that this sequel wouldn't either. That aside, I just feel since it's such a stark difference, it shouldn't be titled after the book series. Just my opinion. I doubt the diversity of the casting was realistic. In fact, I, I, it's not. It probably it wasn't realistic. I know like London's quite diverse, but mm, mm, no, I appreciate it nonetheless. I also wish they would sort of get away from the suffragette vibe. They weren't really for women of color. That's the issue I have with the book Once in Future Witches. I'm not going to get into that. The one who plays Sarah has great bone structure. She is the one who is depicting a real woman based off what the clip at the end said. I had watched a video about magic girls and obviously read some books so I was vaguely familiar with the old timey London terrible vibe but that's not unlike everywhere else but as i said i've read two to three books with a similar angle sweatshop poor women children poverty synopsis <laughs> back to the actress who played sarah i went down the kibby slash kitchener system rabbit hole like two or three months ago and the characteristics of her face the beauty of it is really derived by the bone the bone structure and not the fleshiness some people have. Speaking of faces, Helena Bonham Cartner, Carter, good lord, really has a face meant for period pieces. She made a great Lady Frankenstein in the version they made with Robert De Niro. Although I'm not really into period pieces, my sister was really into The Other Boleyn Girl. I think there was another one, but it was primarily The Other Boleyn Girl. I, on the other hand, read queer retellings and stories inspired by classics. The Creatures of Will and Temper was inspired by the picture of Dorian Gray. The Angel of Crows was the queer retelling of Sherlock Holmes. That might be why I end up on the gay side of YouTube and Twitter. Granted, I don't even have a Twitter, but I get suggested Twitter stuff on YouTube. You know how that works. Um, I think algorithms think I'm gay. I think they would be disappointed to know I'm traditionally queer. You know, odd, weird, not queer, queer. But I, I, I get it. Anyway, another series I adore, Monsters and Manners, is inspired by The Pride and the Prejudice. Also, heavily, Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel. I've never read Pride and the Prejudice. Maybe I should, maybe I should. But I think the queer stuff is what makes it interesting and a worthwhile read. Just my take. And I have read Withering Heights, that's a classic, and let me tell you, I just wanted my time back, but I did learn the Scottish word bonnie, meaning blonde. I love the decorum of that time, in part to, like, the societal structure. I know it was like, it was a double-edged sword, but like, for me, in this era that we live in, although I like to think I'm forward-thinking, socially I have a hard time. This is very much the era of, like, casual sex, and like, it's, it's just nasty out here. The clarity of a debut into, so into society would be greatly appreciated. A ways back through Tumblr, I discovered acquaintance slash like calling cards from the Victorian era. I keep wanting to say Edwardian, but I don't know that that's right. I'm not an era aficionado, and I think that was like architecture, but the architecture, it's like a whole thing. Because <laughs> I know expressionism is also an architecture thing. It confuses me. Anyway, 
I found more of those calling cards on Pinterest. I love those. They are so witty, funny, and cute. And I was like, can you imagine? Like, if you're one of those people who like to, like, keep curios of, like, people you've dated or whatever, imagine a box full of, like, cute, funny, witty things with, like, people's, like, signatures on them or something. It's just thoughtful. It's just so thoughtful. People don't do that anymore. I love thoughtful things like that, but they should they should bring those back. In the movie, it the way they communicate with the fans. I did not come for the romance. I despise that element. I'm gonna be honest, but they really won me over with the fucking fan gesture. Additionally, the joining of their minds, like it was like an ex- intellectual sort of love affair, which was like okay, I'll give you that. Mutual radical <laughs> radicalism was oddly refreshing and reminds me of a recurring thought I've had. Not necessarily from my own personal experiences, just from things that I've seen, you know, being alive for the 23 years I have. Men can really drag a woman down in a way no one else can. And a man uplifting a woman sincerely without necessarily wanting anything from them in return, except like maybe like their lifelong friendship or something. He basically says, spoiler alert, I guess, I love you girl, but I love radicalism and change just as much in a different way. And I felt that, you know, because I view art as a lover, but I'm like, if I actually ever had, like, a relationship, would they, would they, similar but different, right, different sort of loves, art is always going to be there for me, you know, and for him, plants will probably always be there for him, <laughs> anyway, I mean, I, that was, if, if this era of, like, not Vic- Victorianism, that's just an umbrella term, but it's like, if that era had in bo- bohemianism, that, that's it, that's the epitome, epitome of it, like, yeah, on the same YouTube channel, I watched the Matchbox Girl video. There was one about, I think they were called Newspaper Brides or Penny Brides, something like that, where wealthy, you know, rich women marry poor men to reinvigorate their dying estates with their own money. So, absolutely not a love-based marriage. That's sort of the undertone of Monsters and Manners, except he has too much pride to use Hannah's money to re reinvigorate his estate. So, um... That was Travel Light. If you take anything away from this, it is art. Truly art. Art goes on. So, I will. Thanks, guts.